Hey, what's up everyone? So I'm back with another video today and in this one we're going to be taking Django function based views and converting them into class based views. Now, one thing I wanted to do in this video is keep this very raw and not use any of the built in views that Django provides other than the base view that Django extends everything from. So the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of the built in class based views is where beginners get lost because uh, there's a lot of magic that happens under the hood. And when it comes time to trying to customize things or understand what's going on, uh, people get lost here. So that's what I'm going to try to stay away from. And we're just going to build out class based views from scratch in this conversion process. So I do have an article that goes with this. This is on my dev.2 account and Go ahead and check this out linked up in the video description. It's all linked up there. I kind of stumbled there because I forgot that it was dev.2 and not daily.dev. I always get those mixed up. So go ahead and follow along with this. There's more information here along with all the code samples here. So what I have here is actually a demo app that I built up here and we're just going to go through the code and the functionality and then we'll convert it. Uh, this way you can understand what's going on. There is source code provided. This will be in the article. So go ahead, click there and then find the source code if you actually want to do this for yourself. So if we look at our application, this is the core application. I have my server running. All we have is a notes application or a to do app. And this just renders out all the notes that we have. We're able to add in new notes here. So we'll just go ahead and go to the CRUD functionality, add a task here. Here's our note. It's ordered by the last time it was updated. So the most recently updated note, we can also view a note. We can modify it. And we can also delete a note. So we'll just do delete task here. So that's it. That's our application. Now inside of our application, we have our URLs here. So we have three URLs and we have three different views here. So let's go ahead and break this down and then we'll go through the conversion. So we have a view called task list. It's a function based view. And this view takes in two HTTP methods on get request. We simply get all the tasks from the database and then render them out. And on a post request that's on that home page. If you look through the actual template here inside of index, we submit this form and that sends a post request. So when we send a post request, we simply create a task, we save it, and then we redirect a user back to the home page. So that's all that view does. Now for detail, we pass in the primary key. This comes in from the actual URL here. We pass in the primary key. We use it to get the actual item. Then we render that out to the template and on post request. So we actually have a form here. If we go to task.html, this is all in the source code. We actually have a form and everything gets rendered out into the form on post and get request. So when we submit this form right here, this actually goes to the same view. We go ahead and update the body. We get that from the request object and then we redirect a user back to that list. So for delete, all we do is ask the user a question. So first on get, we render out this template called delete.html. We ask if the user really wants to delete this item and then we send a post request. So on post, we simply check that method, delete it, and then send the user back to the home page. So that's our application. Very simple. I didn't want to go through that setup process and building this out because that should be simple to understand. And you also have the source code. Now, to actually create a class based view, we're going to start by inheriting everything from this class right here. So from Django.views, let's go ahead and import that base class based view. And this is going to give us all the logic that we need here. So instead of deleting this, let's go ahead and actually comment this out and build this out from scratch. So in order to create a class based view, all we do is create a class. Let's keep the name. So we'll call this task list. And our view is going to extend from that view class that we have imported right here. So let's go ahead and extend that. And then with a class based view, if you know a little bit about them, you know that everything is separated by HTTP methods. So in our function based view, where if we send a get request, we have to ask that question. And then we have our logic here with class based views. We actually have methods that come in from this view right here. So we just go ahead and override those. And we say, if we have a get request, let this method right here take care of all that logic. Then if we have a post request, we're going to go ahead and let the post method handle all the logic here. So that's all that's going to happen. So all get requests will go here and all post requests will go here. So inside of these methods, it looks a lot like this 
right here where we simply pass in the request object but because this is a class we pass in self so we can reference the actual view and then we pass in request so so far not that different we just pass in self before request and that still looks a lot like our function base view now what we're going to do here is we're going to take the logic from this view right here and simply separate it by these uh, conditions right here so let's take all of this if the method is get we're going to go ahead and pass in all of this right here into the get request so let's copy that bring that into the get method and we'll bring that in right here let's remove the comments and then for the post method we want to go ahead and take all of this so we want to create a new item and then redirect our user so we'll paste that in remove the comments and there we go that is our new view so this separates the logic right here at the core level. I know class-based views become much more uh, complex than this and actually clean up our code a lot based on how you can build them out. But this helps you understand what's happening. We just have a class and then we separate the logic in here. Anybody should be able to understand this because it's actually very similar to a function-based view. At the core, all views are actually functions. So let's go ahead and save this. And now we need to go to our URLs. And we simply need to add in dot as underscore view to our class base view now. So task list is now a class. So we need to go ahead and call in as view. And that way the URL can actually call that. If we don't add this in for a class, it's just not going to work. So let's just make sure everything's working. So we have our get and post request. So we want to check out the list and the ability to create. So we'll just go ahead and go in here let's refresh it so the get request is working because we now see this list and if you look here this function base view is commented out so that means it's all coming from here now and we want to see if we can actually add an item so let's just say new item let's add it and there we go so that means that when we sent that post request this method right here was triggered so that's all we had to do for our view so let's go ahead and actually modify the detail view and then the delete view so for the detail, let's go ahead and comment this out and let's just rebuild it. So we're just going to redo a lot here. So we'll do class, we'll do task detail. We're going to extend the view class. Then we're going to create the method for our get request. We're going to pass in self request. Now for the detail view, we need this primary key. So notice that we have request and the primary key. So let's go ahead and pass in self request and then PK. So we just need to add that in. It doesn't really change much from a function based view. Now we're going to take all this logic right here, bring that in and uncomment that. And then we'll just go ahead and build out the post method. We'll scroll up here, create the method post self request and PK. Now we'll just take that logic, grab the task item itself, and then bring this down here and paste that in. So I'm actually following along what I have in the article. Um, forgot how to uncomment this. Let's just do this manually. And we want to fix the indentation here too. So fix that. It's going to add a little bit of time to the tutorial, but that's okay. So now we have our task detail view. So if you're following along with your article, let's just scroll down here. I show the base views and then we start with the list view so we go through here now we're on detail so we just separated everything and we need to go ahead and add in as view to the actual url so we can just do dot as underscore view bring that in and now we want to see if we can actually view an item and modify that so let's check this out so if we go to new item perfect it's working we can view it and we'll just say updated let's make sure that we can actually save that and perfect so now our detail class base view works so the last one by this point you should see the pattern here we're just creating a class and separating the logic so we'll take that comment it out save it and then create a new class call this task delete throw in request no not that <laughs> we'll throw in view see i got lazy there and messed that up here so we'll just call that task just got ahead of myself separate this by get and post pass in self request and we do need the primary key so we'll throw in pk there and we'll just go ahead and return the actual task here so 
this is where task-based views actually thrive because you're going to see us rewrite some code here um, i won't get into the actual extending of the view because that's not the purpose here but this is where we can actually save a lot of the logic here so we get our task and then we simply return it and pass that in through the context dictionary okay so we have the context and then we just return that value now for the post method let's go ahead and create post pass in self request and pk so what i'm going to do here is actually get the same task and then we're going to go ahead and delete it now this can be actually done in another method here and where we we actually don't have to query that task twice so there's different ways of doing this again that's the part that i'm not getting into because we're sticking to the core methods but this is where class-based views can actually save us a lot of that headache right here of having to uh, rewrite our code it helps make our code more reusable so we get the item this is where we ask the question and then we delete it so let's just make sure delete works here so I'll refresh it looks like we have an issue let's see oh i forgot one thing here and that is in the url we forgot to change this to as underscore view okay let's go ahead and save that what's our issue now as view pk um looks like we forgot something in here yeah i forgot the colon there all right now we should be good so we'll go here, we'll go to delete tasks. So get method works and the post method works. Awesome. That's it for that conversion process. So let's go ahead and just see what we did. So all we had to do was we had to change our function to a class right here. We go ahead and extend it from the view or the base view class. We separate our logic by HTTP methods. We had to add in self before that request object. And then we added in as view. So this is a very simplistic way of looking at things. Again, when you're going into the built-in class-based views, they can really save you time. There's ways to abstract all of this and make it better, but we're not getting into that. So I hope this actually teaches you something and you understand class-based views uh, just a little bit better. So I'll see you all in another video.